Now from Washington, Sam Donaldson. It may be the custody battle of the century. Scientists, Indians, the U.S. government, they're all trying to lay claim to a bunch of old bones. Well, not just any old bones. These bones happen to be 65 million years old. In the midst of it all is the man who dug them up in South Dakota. For him, it was the find of a lifetime. Now, he could wind up in jail. Sylvia Chase has the amazing tale of the fight over a dinosaur named Sue. I started collecting fossils when I was four years old. I cannot envision doing something else. Meet Pete Larson, a grown-up with a job any kid would envy. He's a dinosaur hunter. And here's the movie version of the dinosaur of Pete Larson's dreams. Tyrannosaurus Rex, a fearsome meat eater more than three stories high, who ruled the earth millions of years ago. Still a creature of mystery. Only nine skeletons had been found so far. Somewhere out here, though, there was a 10th T-Rex, and finding it would be the crowning achievement for any dinosaur hunter. Larson's native South Dakota is dinosaur country, laced with fossils of North America's prehistoric creatures. Every time you turn over a rock, you might find something that no one else has ever seen before. Then, one hot August day in 1990. I believe that the tail's going that way and the skull is going this way. But we're just going to have to dig it up and see. Larson had found T-Rex number 12, and his crew made a home video of the excavation. This is one of his front teeth. They named the dinosaur Sue, after paleontologist Sue Hendrickson, who led them to the bones. The skull is right here, lying more or less right side up. That's where the eye would be and the heel over cheekbone. The lower jaw. The dinosaur named Sue had been buried in that hill over there for 65 million years. It's in a remote corner of a ranch in central South Dakota. She may be the greatest find in the history of dinosaur hunting. The biggest, the most complete, and the most valuable. And so it was headline news, and Pete Larson was on top of the world. Because of the discovery of this one skeleton, we're going to open a new chapter in, in, in the book of dinosaurs. Sue is the finest Tyrannosaurus rex ever found. Leading dinosaur experts like Dr. Bob Bakker confirmed the importance of Larson's find. Sue is giving us an insight into how this last dynasty of dinosaurs, there were many, 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 many ages of dinosaurs, and the very last was ruled by Tyrannosaurus rex. And we want to know about that ruler. Why did it rule? How did it die? Larson says Sue died at about 100 years of age, and he thinks he knows how because he found the tooth of another T-Rex in Sue's facial bones. She probably died as a result of a bite from another Tyrannosaurus rex. The whole left side of her face seems to be just torn away. But the most important thing about Sue is that 90% of her was recovered. She's more complete than any of the existing T-Rex skeletons. We have the first complete tail. For the first time, we know how many vertebrae Tyrannosaurus had in their tail. We have the first complete shoulder blade. We have. Uh, the first complete, complete arm. And the first virtually complete skull, all five feet of it. And for the first time, stomach contents. A duck-billed dinosaur believed to have been Sue's last supper. The amount of knowledge that we can uh, obtain from this specimen is just staggering. Larson's company is expert at the incredibly delicate task of separating fossils from the rock encasing them. With customers like Harvard, the Sorbonne, and the Smithsonian, Larson's Black Hills Institute is located in tiny Hill City, South Dakota, population 600. But its reputation is worldwide. Do you make a lot of money at it? No, I don't make a lot of money. Yet even after carting off perhaps the most valuable T-Rex in the world, Larson announced it would go into a nonprofit museum in Hill City, the kind of place he had in mind since finding his first fossil so Sue was not for sale. Sue is a premier piece. Why would we sell the best piece, the piece that's going to bring thousands and thousands of people to visit that museum? That was great news in Hill City, a tourist town, where even with a nightly Western gunfight and an 1890 train, the average income stays at $3,000 below the poverty line. The hope was the Dinosaur Museum would stop vacationers who roll through town on their way to Mount Rushmore. 
We were dreaming high and big at that time. Hill City Mayor Drew Vitter. Can you imagine little bitty old Hill City going to national recognition in a year or two's time? Where people said, have you been to Hill City? Where they didn't even know it existed before? But the dream of Hill City and Pete Larson turned into a nightmare on the morning of May 14th. One of our workers came over and said, the whole place is crawling with FBI. And I said, <laughs> my mouth dropped open, I just didn't want to say. Armed federal agents had shown up to seize the bones of the dinosaurs, saying they'd been stolen. What was going on? Well, it turns out Sue is worth as much as $20 million. And when word got around, you can call it envy or just plain greed, but suddenly people started claiming Sue was theirs. Who owns Sue? If the laws of the land mean anything, I own it. Who owns Sue? We believe we do, the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Who owns Sue? <laughs> the public owns uh, Sue. Who owns Sue? The Black Hills Museum of Natural History Foundation. Larson says he owns Sue because when he found her on the 35,000 acre ranch of Morris Williams, he paid Williams $5,000, top value for a fossil still in the ground. The Williamses say the sale doesn't matter and they own Sue because they're Indians. And Sue was removed from a section of the Williams ranch, which is protected by a trust agreement with the U.S. government. Well, I told him more than once that he should clear with the federal government, and he knew that he should. I chose not to. And now that they know what Sue's worth, the Williamses want their cut of that 20 million. Isn't it the money? It's That's, always the money. It's always the money. That's what it's about. 20 million dollars would also mean a lot to the Cheyenne River Sioux tribe. The average income here, $7,000 a year. The unemployment rate, 86%. For Indians, looting of artifacts from reservations, including fossils, is a long, seething issue. Tribal Chairman Greg Borland contends that though Sue was taken from the privately held Williams Ranch, the ranch lies within the reservation boundaries. All of this land has restrictions to it, and you cannot just uh, say, go ahead, dig up a big old dinosaur, here's five grand, I'm out of here. At one point, the tribe proposed a dinosaur partnership to Pete Larson, but negotiations broke down when Larson insisted he had to be sole owner. I gave my hand of friendship to Mr. Larson, the Institute. They slapped it away. Uh, that's, that's a hand that I will think twice before I extend it again. I think that uh, if there was a wrong done by us, it was by perhaps not keeping in better touch with the tribe. At the tribe's urging, the U.S. government stepped into the fray. And if things weren't complicated enough, U.S. Attorney Kevin Schieffer declared, quote, the fossil is the property of the United States, period. It is a public treasure. It is a national treasure. And so calling the bones criminal evidence, Schieffer ordered the federal agents to crate them up and take them away. Sue's bones are now locked in a steel box at the South Dakota School of Mines. I felt like we were being raped. We were being, these people were here stealing from us. Uh, these are the people who are supposed to protect us. These are the police who are supposed to keep things like this from happening. And here they were perpetrating this crime. It's 740, taking the Black Hills by storm, just like the FBI did. Here's Hill City Sioux on KKLS. Hill City Sioux. Hill City Sioux. The government stepped in. Oh, gee, what else is new? Throughout the area, protesters angered by the loss of big bucks that Sioux represented demanded the dinosaur be returned to Larson. What right does the government have that fossil would have never been found without us? It would have never been excavated without us. It would have never been prepared without us. It'd be sitting in the ground and washing away year by year until she rots away. The feds didn't see it that way. So though Larson had paid 5000 for Sue and spent 100000 to restore her, the government was now saying Larson stole Sue and other fossils from federal land. U.S. Attorney Schieffer says policy prevents him from talking about Larson's case. But he indicates it involves more than just the excavation of Sioux. If you're going on federal land and stealing federal property, and if you're going on Indian land and stealing Indian property, 
that's reprehensible and that's going to be prosecuted. But who owns what out here? Some areas are a patchwork of Indian land, private land, federal land. They're looking for the chance that I was in a pasture with which I had permission to go on and perhaps went across an invisible boundary and picked up something uh, from somebody's property that I didn't have permission for. In the case of Sue, Larson invited scientists from around the country to come look, which is not something a thief would likely do. If you and I stole Rembrandt, we sure wouldn't tell the public we had it. Come on in and see what I stole. Examine it. See if it's authentic. We would hide it. But sources tell Primetime Larson will be indicted on major felony charges. He's already gone into debt in his fight with the government. Could you be driven out of business because of this? Oh, absolutely. Um, the government in cases like this wins, a, wins their war through attrition. It will take and use up every uh, last uh, one of our resources. And they, you know, it's a bottomless pit there with the government. They have, they, they're using our money to fight us too. They're using tax money to do this. Are you willing to tell the U.S. taxpayers what you've spent so far? I am staying within my budget. Meanwhile, the dinosaur named Sue is staying in the lockup, still in that steel box, where Larson says she could turn to dust. Sue is a living thing, and she needs to breathe. Her bones need to breathe in order to not uh, decompose. They've taken the most fantastic fossil in the world, and they put her into boxes where she's being destroyed. 